up guys how are you doing i hope everyone is doing well today and welcome to the first episode of a new series i'm starting called my bullet journal essentials i'm going to be taking you through all those nitty-gritty details and the exact thought process that i went through when i customized each part of my journal to work the best for me so i could be both the most productive and the most creative in my journal. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you enjoy it or if you wanna see more videos in this essential series. So today's video, we are starting off with the first thing that we need before we even go into bullet journaling itself, which is supplies. I'm gonna be taking you through all the supplies that I use on a daily basis. The plans that I do have, I use a lot and each of them has a really specific purpose, which is key for my journaling. So if you wanna see what my essentials are in my journal, keep watching. I hope you guys enjoy. My biggest essential, the most essential, the one thing you really, really, really need if you are going to bullet journal is an actual journal. I use a Lloyd Sherm 1917 with a clear cover from the brand Cloth and Paper over top, and that's the one I use. I also have lined it with these clear, or I guess they're white filing tabs. These are from the Post-it brand, and these are the medium ones right here, and this is a large tab. And I really love those because they're a thin plastic. So they're flexible and durable, and if one breaks, they come in a pack of 20, so it's easy to replace. I would recommend if you're buying a journal for the first time, just get one that's really affordable, like a Leuchtturm or something even cheaper that you can get for like five bucks, because the point of trying out your journal at first is not to have the, nice, the nicest notebook ever. The point is to see if the system works for you. All right, let's move on to my supplies. These are the supplies I use in my bullet journal. I like to keep it pared down because I just like to have those staples and essentials that it's easy to travel with. I don't wanna be traveling with 500 pens. It honestly really is not my jam. I like to have just a couple pens that I can grab and go. And you know, only you can do a lot with a couple pens. I use four main supplies in my journal. I use a pen, I use a small brush pen, I use some type of marker and I use a photo printer. I'm gonna go through all four of them, but let's start with the regular pen. So this is a Caveco Sport pen. I really like this pen because it's small. I have really, really small hands, so this is light and small. It feels super comfortable and I absolutely love this like beige macchiato color. It is stunning. I originally actually used a Muji pen for the longest time, but I splurged and I got this one and I definitely have to say I really enjoy it. I mainly use this pen for a couple things. The first is my regular handwriting. This is what my handwriting looks like if you've never seen it. I like to write in all caps because I find it looks a lot more clean and neat and my brain's already chaotic enough, so if my journal can be as neat and clean and easy to read as possible, that makes my life so much easier. I also like to do lettering, so an example of that with this pen would be like this. I actually really love hand lettering with a ballpoint pen because I find, you know what, I find it looks really beautiful easy you're not worrying as much about pressure control and the nice thing is is with a pen you can do I would call this like a mono um, pen calligraphy but you can actually also go in and you can thicken these down strokes I don't actually do this because I really like how my calligraphy looks without this with this pen but you can actually go in and thicken the down strokes and bam, looks like you used a brush pen. So you can do so much with a regular pen. There's so many things you can do. So 
if you only have like one pen you can use in your journal, don't feel like you can't do anything and you can't make cool spreads. You can do whatever you want. Look, like look at this calligraphy. That was with the standard pen. And if you practice, you can do this too. So, you know, having one pen that is easy to hold, works well for you, is gonna make such a big difference when you're writing and also when you're trying to do faux calligraphy like this. In my journal, I use this pen for any type of regular note taking or daily plans. This is the pen I use the most often, every single day, probably three hours a day because that's how much time I spend in my agenda. I also really like using this pen to write um, calligraphy titles of my notes pages. I write my calligraphy titles on the side of my page because I find it takes up less space um, for note taking and it's also easier to see when you're flipping through the pages of the notebook because the title is on the side. Next, I'm gonna go through my Pentel Food Touch Sign Pen. So this is a great pen for people who are starting off with calligraphy. It has a really um, stiff tip, which means that it's a lot easier to get that thin line and that thick line because you don't have to be as good with um, the pressure on the paper. So this is what this pen looks like. Why don't we write, um, I guess we can write yo. That's another version of hi, right? Now this pen I find is a bit more finicky in the sense that you really do need to make sure you're actually like sitting at like a desk or it's gonna be a lot more difficult to write with it because it is a brush pen. There. So first of all, guys, do you see how similar this looks? Like that's sweet. Like honestly, this is a great brush pen and if you're gonna be learning calligraphy, I would recommend a harder tip brush pen starting out. But as you can see, you can get a really similar look with just a ballpoint pen and you know, practicing with a ballpoint or a gel pen, which is my personal preference, is a great way to develop your calligraphy because you start to really understand the shapes without getting into the downstrokes and all that pressure control. Sometimes it's important to start with like the first step, which is actually understanding the shapes of the letters and then moving into a brush pen where you're gonna start to develop your pressure control and all those good downstrokes and all that good stuff. I use this pen mainly for my monthly titles. I use it every single day as well. I like to use it for the titles of my monthly spread because I love the bold look that it gives as well as the days of the week in my daily spreads. I really like writing the letter of the day every single day because it makes, it forces me to practice my lettering every single day, even if it's only one letter. One letter is better than doing no letters. The next pen that I use is this Tombow Dual Brush Pen, which I use as a marker of sorts. If you've never seen a Tombow Dual Brush Pen, it has this side, which is, which is a brush, and it has this side, which is like a standard pen. Now you can do lettering with this brush pen. I don't in my bullet journal because it's such a big pen. The lettering is like huge. So if I just do one letter, like if I do this Y, you're gonna see like, oh my gosh, the caffeine is kicking in. Anyway, if you see, do you see how much bigger that is? I find the Tombow to be really big, so it's not, the best for a bullet journal. Maybe if your journal is like super big, then it might work for you. But my journal is a A5 size and I find that to be a bit on the big side. What I do like to use my Tombos for is for splashes of color in my monthly and my weekly spread. I just like to color coordinate each month. Um, so that's where I bring these markers in. However, I would recommend as a substitute to the Tombow, the Crayola Super Tips. This is what they look compared to each other. There we go. That's what they look like. The Crayola Super Tips, I think, are a super great resource, and I think people think they can only be used for, you know, coloring and all that good stuff, but, like, I think these are a great resource. 
You can do lettering with these as well, which I think a lot of people have seen because it's kind of come up lately, but I think these are great for lettering. As you can see, you know, they're a little, you have to, it's kind of hard <laughs> going between these different brush pens because you know, you gotta really like practice and get used to the pens. Switching between pens is like trying to drive three different cars. It's kind of, takes a little bit of practice, but as you can see, the Crayola gives a very similar effect to the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, and you can literally get a pack of 50 for I think like 20 bucks, which is pretty sweet. I would actually recommend if you're buying some markers for your bullet journal when you're starting out, I would just get a 50 pack of the Crayola Super Tips, and then I would go back to the Tombos if you wanna invest in a few, and buy some colors that are unique and that aren't similar at all to any of your Super Tips, so that you have a bigger color selection, and then you're not buying a Tombow for $3 that is exactly the same color as your Crayola Super Tip. The last thing that I use is actually not a pen, it is my HP Sprocket. This is a photo printer. Um, I got mine at Costco at Christmas time, and at the time I got 50 free printer pages with it, which was a pretty sweet deal. I love using this for printing photos to paste in my journal, either when I'm traveling and I wanna kinda do like a photo a day, or I want to have a memory spread for a special event and I want to print out the photos. What I really love about this printer is that the photos you print have a sticky backing that's removable so you can paste them into your journal directly, which makes life a lot easier because then you don't have to carry around a glue stick. However, I would say that the photos aren't going to be true to color, but you know, I think if you're looking for that in a photo printer, I would maybe consider investing in an actual photo printer versus something portable like this. I wouldn't consider this something that you need to go and buy when you first start journaling, but I have really enjoyed using it in my journal and putting photos in my journal. Okay, so I hope you guys found that walkthrough of my essential supplies and the writing styles I used in my journal helpful. And I hope you guys are excited for the essential series. There's gonna be quite a few episodes, so it might be a bit long, but I really wanna go in depth and show you guys my thought process because that's what I find the most interesting about bullet journaling is how people thought about these spreads and you know why they did things the way they did. Let me know if you're excited to see the Essential series and let me know if there's any specific part of my journal that you guys want to see. And if you have questions about any of the supplies I mentioned, they are linked below, but drop me a comment and I'll definitely get back to you. All right, I will see you next time.